Ah, welcome back my gardening friends. Well, this is the June progress tour. What we've done, what we need to do, and we've uh, taken uh, another lot of comfrey there. That's gone into my comfrey bin with water steeping. The perennial weeds. That's all the rooty weeds without the eye. And uh, that just needs a bit of a stir up when I'm brave enough to do it because it does stink. Uh, the trommel, I've got work to do to that. The last couple of years I've used the petrol quad cast mower on the metal steel drum. That turns that wheel, that turns this. I'm going to use a disabled scooter to operate that. The uh, leaf moulds dropping down nicely. The cardboard's there to retain the moisture, but it also stops the moisture getting in. So when we are due rain, I ought to be undoing that really. But this 21 ton bags went into there. That's the leaf mold we collected in 2018. And that's what we collected in 2019. And that's the bit that we'll be putting through the trommel. I ended up with three wheelie bins full of leaf mold. Absolutely godsend uh, for any allotment for moisture retention and as you can see the drop of rain we had this is uh, one of my mixes this is all my homemade compost you can see that in my playlist under homemade liquid plant foods compost mixes etc lots of liquid fluid about this is the wormery bin the bin that was here that's empty now i need to get that emptied because that's not uh, a full I'll just get too much of it. It's surprising how much. Obviously, as you all know, 80% of our all our vegetables is water. So that's what we get. And the rest has been tipped on the wood chips uh, because these will be uh, harvested very soon over the uh, summer. Ready to add to the mixes that I do. That's why I don't mind dropping weeds on the floor. I've been managed to get some more of these lifting traps. They're single use. The companies deliver materials with these and refuse to use them again. So make a good use of those and you'll see that shortly. The gravity fed rain water guttering wick guttering system. I've now solved the problem. Uh, all this in here, so there's some guttering. We've took down there, bend, round there, bend, all the way round. All from my builder friend that didn't uh, need any more. The float was sent to me from Carl from Nitrogen Fix No Dig. His channel's disappeared again. Uh, I've reset the valve. It was coming up too high. A little uh, yellow courgette there coming along. Celery, I've planted nine there. See how that does. Far too close, but who cares? Melon in the corner. This is the pomegranate. Lots of new growth again. Will we get any flowers? Will we get any fruit? It's your last chance. I love pruning bushes, but this one will get pruned from the bottom. The grapes gone mad. They do go mad. All this growth can, can be cut back now. giant cabbage there's probably not going to be no show this year but i'm learning all the while this is my pipe for feeding getting the water right down into the bottom hashtag shed wars this is there to support the leaves stops the old cabbage rocking and falling over and this is that water feature with holes dug um, in and i've buried it slightly so any roots can get out in the bottom and uh, we need to get those weeds out because they're taking up valuable moisture great vine is recovering after those frosts that we had some say are they late frost no they're not because we get frost right to the end of May into June it's the chance we take when we plant out our tender plants this lily some of them had their day now but they're absolutely gorgeous love them some weeds there to get pulled out but lots and lots of volunteer sunflower seeds. The mice take them, hide them, bury them, they forget them. 
and then they grow. I've got peas, sweet peas growing everywhere. But this will be my display. The sunflower, a row of uh, sunflowers there and there. And uh, there's the tallest one that's been bashed by the wind. And that's going to end up uh, ooh, way up there somewhere. But looking forward to that. The asparagus. <clears throat> I'm going to have a permanent bed of asparagus. This is where I save seed from my volunteer asparagus. I've never bought any asparagus. I've ended up with all these. Now, Becky, Becky's allotment, she left them in these small pots and they got pot bound. So I've learned my lesson from her. That's why we share these videos, hashtag Shed Wars. Share your knowledge and experience. Something simple, somebody will learn something from. So please stay with me to the end. So these will be stay here again all this year and maybe next year we don't know we'll see how they get on i'll take the advice from my friends one of the strawberries i accidentally pulled out birds haven't had that at the moment so we've replaced some of those fruit bushes with some of the giants giant cabbage giant cell heriac <coughs> beetroot now this is one of the first beetroot that we had the allium leaf minor damage on that we sprayed with the neem oil never took the leaf off you see but all that leaf is actually putting energy into that massive beetroot that we're going to get by the end of the growing season bill and val's allotment harlequins that'll they're multi-headed they'll actually cover this area so when i'm asleep nobody will spot me now there's the red poppies before we go over there these are Allen's from the Dawn Chorus plot. They're the fluffy ones. So when I sit there, they should be about six foot high, five to six foot high, nice display. And then all these will produce me a lovely display to impress Nick at the hashtag sunflower challenge. Let's go over to those uh, poppies. So these poppies are from the ones that are from home. Now, these are probably now three years old and they've just started to bulk out. And you can see there the uh, poppy head, it just, they're just getting over the best, but this wind has just knocked them about. But over a number of years, like the one at home that's been there five years, they get bigger and bigger. So those of you have asked for the seed, uh, just be patient. And as you can see that one there, exactly the same. It looks like it's dried out. Or I've stuck my big feet on it. Tying up the sunflowers. And it had to be the one that I was growing for the tallest. This wind has undone the string. Of course, it's flopped down and it's tried to grow. So it's flopped down and then it's tried to grow again. So I've had to try and straighten it out. And these winds with my water collection system, and a lot of you saw me doing uh, uh, a bit of a, a dance with it, aeroplane, etc. And the wind caught that one on that side and uh, it's absolutely ripped it to pieces. So like on my compost bins, I do need to tie these down. This system with the pulleys from the blinds is okay, but it's not strong enough. So I need to sort that out. And we've collected a, a little bit of rainwater from there. Not much, but again, every little drop helps. I spy with my little eye in the middle of the screen. Uh, a raspberry runner. Now it's either come from those over there or these here and look all these <coughs> you're never going to get the roots out just keep pulling them off strawberries absolutely love growing in wood chips yes i do have weeds we just have to keep on top of them these polycarbonate sheets and those plastic sheets there are going on for another project this is take two by the way because again i went over 32 minutes and it's split it into two videos so i'm trying to uh, get round as quickly as i can this is the compost that i find on the side of the road the cloth bags great for growing in i've grown many things in them experimenting but this compost uh, coco koi i sieve this use it for my carrots for the for the big holes and this is them in action uh, hashtag shed wars sharing the cloth pots i put into these 
bottom of the barrels or any container something old you'll see something about that's no good the bottom might be okay cut it off look at the growth on that they're loving it oh i crashed uh, that's just a, a thin one but it does help it just helps me to see whether it needs water or not and just by lifting them up helps as well uh, the strawberries had a real bad time with the weather as you can see there they dried out doesn't tell the trees will suck more moisture up than anything else <clears throat> and as you can see that tree is probably just short of water uh, so that's uh, that one there so it does need a little bit but the pigeons and the blackbirds are taking uh, strawberries uh, faster than i can and uh, it's just a, it looks like that's a, a slug mark in that uh, <clears throat> slug marks bird marks if they pecked at it i'll take it off and i eat them i don't waste them hashtag shed wars when you plant your new trees these have been in for a while i planted these on a dry summer I hadn't got my pipes in I had to put these in afterwards so we damaged a few roots as we put the crowbar in to slide these pipes in so when you put a new tree in learn from my lesson <clears throat> put a pipe in right down below the water goes down there right into the bottom where the roots need it water at the top the roots will come to the top the tree will fall over uh, tip number two for that is somebody told me oh your creatures are going to fall down there pop a pot over the top pop them done safe uh, may give this one a, a, a drink as you can see the telltale signs there everything's died at the bottom of this tree because this tree is absolutely desperate for a drink even though we've had this rain we still need to keep watering let's see if we can ah hello are you eating my strawberry now that looks like a, a youngster so we shan't uh, scare him completely. <coughs> Have you enjoyed my uh, strawberries? We have to share. I'm really pleased with all these sunflowers. So thank you to Nick at Nick's Allotment, Alan at the Dawn Chorus Plot, and Bill and Val from... Uh, Bill and Val's uh, allotments. This is going to be a wonderful winning uh, display. I was watching Woody from uh, the Cumbrian homestead and I'd try spraying aphids before and they love the neem oil. Woody did it and he it was very successful so I tried it as well. You can see the areas there that are looking a bit sad. They've had the sap sucked clean out of them and there's the new growth and it's all over here now. So the neem oil has worked on this uh, plum, as you can see, these new flowers. Uh, unfortunately, we may have lost most of the plums in this wind. I can't see many for now, but we must press on. Everything's looking good. Uh, we'll be having the plot inspection soon, and all this has got to be down to six foot. So I will have to prune. Look at this madness, the growth. We have a cherry. Is it worth having these cherries? They've got to produce or they'll be gone. The main reason for putting this structure up with the rhubarb was to stop it from flopping over so I could walk up here. I used to have a middle wire. I used to tie everything in. Why tie everything in when you can put these on the outside, feed these in and uh, they will uh, hold the cells. They'll have more air, more, uh, and we should be able to pick uh, more fruit. The blackberries doing fine. They're all, uh, filling out now keep pulling the uh, runners from these up as much as we can these will self seed all my old pegs volunteer poppies the experiment to see whether it's what these are summer or fruiting and i think they are autumn fruiting they're not producing like the summer fruiting one that's in my fruit cage so this is the rhubarb leaves where I've been putting the rhubarb leaves and most of you have guessed it's the rhubarb leaf tea insecticide. Hashtag Shed Wars, another tip. 
So those are the juices. The leaves are poisonous. So that's the concentrate, that's just the liquid from the leaves and I've been putting it into the can and spraying uh, some of the plants on uh, plot three. So as we leave plot one to get to plot three, where you'll uh, go into the fruit cage. This pond netting is absolutely ideal. So much better than the netting, the pea netting that I tried to use. The birds do try and get in, but while they're pecking at the wood chips and the grubs, they're not getting at uh, my blueberries. I've been watering those because they looked a little bit sad. One year they just all dropped off. So this year I learned my lesson. Again, some aphid damage there. That hasn't been sprayed with a rhubarb leaf tea. This has the damage there, the shoot there. So the rhubarb leaf tea concentrate mixed with some soap. It's probably the soap that does all the work. But the stink off the rhubarb, leaf, uh, rhubarb leaves is absolutely awful. They're the currants. Uh, these leaves I've been spraying, but we mustn't spray when we've got all these baby ladybirds, ladybugs. They are friendly. They're the, the babies. So horrible looking leaves, but they're having a great time in there. We're going to end up with at least uh, 15 lady, new ladybirds to go onto the plants. Wind damage. The white currants. So I, when I pruned my white currants, I got these stems, I just stuck them in the ground. These are growing quite well. It doesn't mean to say there are roots there. So these will stay in for a little bit longer. We've got a few weeds about. Summer fruiting raspberries. Birds love the summer fruiting raspberries. That's why they're inside. Uh, they've had a good drink of water and now I'll be feeding with comfrey and hopefully we'll get a, a bumper crop from these. Gooseberries and gooseglogs, what do you call them? They're, uh, they're looking very nice. Blueberries do take a long time to grow. Don't prune them unless we need to. But they just need a drop of water to keep them going. Lovely green growth on here but again this wind unseasonal wind is uh, causing uh, complete havoc and again i do need some sort of straps here as well so i'll keep collecting those straps until i've got enough to do everything i was hoping to take these as cuttings they've come up from the bottom but as you can see the dry weather we've had has uh, finished those off may still get that one there but if not i'll try taking some cuttings we have some uh, beet leaf minor damage there and there on those i've just noticed that uh, this morning when i've come to the plot on the bull's blood there i don't spray these i've just been picking the leaves off destroying them they're the originals there's some another planting those originals Chard will always be an original, uh, original because they'll keep growing until they go to seed. My bunch and spring onions that I've always struggled with, but I'm growing a lot now in my greenhouse grow room and hopefully soon I'll be setting up the Mars Hydro 600 lights. I think it's the SP 600s. They'll be in the description below. The SP 150. Uh, well, pop down and have a look in the description second successional sow in there everything's looking great in the square foot garden i must admit i'm really pleased with it the vertical garden the verti king absolutely gorgeous these are the save tomato seeds seed the overwintering seed it's in my playlist where we slice the tomatoes up that we like shop bought whatever the ones you've grown f1 it doesn't matter they will grow and they all taste like tomatoes this is bed three. Two empty there, ready to take something else. I think these are the pak choy. The peas, the pea shoots. Really surprised how well they taste. These have been took out the top and there's the new growth. So hopefully we'll get uh, some more 
of these and I have really enjoyed them and we've got some nice little radish there we'll show you there these later when we do uh, the uh, our vegetable monthly vegetable harvest uh, reveal potatoes this bed is just an extra bed I've got a load of soil all the soil compost I buy about eight or ten bags of new compost a year just for those plants that need it all the rest is the compost we find on the side of the road the cannabis cannabis growers throw away thank you very much appreciate it and it does a great mulch to retain the moisture and these street lamp cover covers do a great job of retaining moisture hashtag shed wars um, doing really well and there's the other pot in there so we water from the sides the water goes around there and we don't actually get any stem rot he says until he shows you something in the polytunnel so these are my sweet corn in there interplanted with winter swede you call some people call it something else can't think of it at the moment a little bit of pigeon damage there and they just help retain moisture and hold back those other plants once the sweet corn's up and growing uh, the Swedes will be there but they're, they're looking really good and I have treated some of these with the rhubarb a leaf tea insecticide because they were getting some uh, damage aphid damage and it's just holding that damage back we saw off the beet leaf miner most of it's died now but the flies moths are about all the while they keep attacking us the pigeons are having a lovely feast along this peas i'm going to have to do this year was a complete experiment with all these beds i've been using neem oil uh, the pigeons were landing so i had to put some netting on the top but i'm going to figure out what i actually need to do before if i can do it without buying netting i will did full loop there guys got a bit dizzy these are the uh, crown prints from kelly's uh, kitchen garden uh, they can grow there and uh, grow along here using as much space as i can so we've got the peas up this side long beans and cobra french beans there again swedes up the middle they can sit in the ground all winter i'll be harvest them in march next year and these are bill and vowels um, French bean, the Pongo. I started spelling it right now with an N instead of an M. Uh, cabbages. Now this is a broccoli. <laughs> that's, I think that's a co kohlrabi. That's definitely not a broccoli, because this is a broccoli, and it's uh, going to need harvesting that's not going to get any better but the beets interplanted the beet root there again I want to harvest them like that I've got more to go in you'll see those in the polytunnel I've been very good at successional sowing I think these are the sprouts and uh, hopefully these are my cauliflowers that uh, are actually going to give me uh, my first ever decent cauliflower some uh, more giant reds there now if they don't become giants they become really good red centered cabbages again swedes there interplanted potatoes are doing extremely well in the permanent potato bed until i get to all these beds sorted some onions are gone to seed you can tell how they've uh, bellied out the ones that have gone to seed I've left the markers so I can harvest those first these are the giant onions uh, some of these that I've neglected are doing better than others it's variegated for some reason but the ones that haven't gone to seed nice size they'll store nicely these are more of the giants from Peter Glazebrook and these are from Pete's uh, back garden some nice specimens there nice show onion no shows this year but all make for good eating 
Uh, just before we talk about parsnips, uh, all these beds, people have asked how much did I pay for scaffold, planks, etc. Everything you've seen today, including all the pallet collars, have cost me, cost me about £270. £200 for the scaffold boards and then it's screws and a wood saw. Yes, I ruined the wood saw, but for £270, my whole plot, that includes all the saw, compost, it's all been recycled, repurposed, reused, saved, wood chips, leaf mould, cannabis compost. Not bad at all. So, any pennies I get from my monetization can go on the things that we need to buy. And my polytunnel is probably going to cost me three to four hundred pounds to raise and do everything I want to do to it. So thank you very much for those that watch my videos from start to finish. Parsnips looking great. Nice early sowing, the 11th of March, April, again with the carrots. This weather, so unseasonal. Every two weeks I've sowed some carrots. We've had a failure there because it's been too hot. And then this is where everything goes wrong. It doesn't matter how much you water or what you do, but that's south, that's where the sun's at its highest. Uh, you can see there that it's still damp and that's where everything's growing. Uh, then the rest, I've taken the ones off, but we've got loads and loads of um, areas that have got nothing. That one's just coming through, but look at the difference. So next year, I'm going to sow everything all in one go. Uh, these were planted on my birthday, the 24th of May, and there's absolutely nothing. Yes, they've got a little bit more time. There's one over there growing. Again, is that because I've taken the pallet collar off now that was using for protection? That one. And they never dried out. Lesson learned. The rain we've had has given me uh, some uh, little drop of water. I'm going to have to rush this now, guys. We're getting close to 30 minutes. Jerusalem artichokes, they're doing okay. Jerusalem fartichokes, because if you eat too many, you get wind. Again, I've replanted those two that died. But as you move across in the shade, they're doing really well, even with one pallet collar on. Broad beans, I have actually sprayed some broad beans here with the rhubarb leaf tea insecticide and uh, that's where I rubbed it earlier on take one and it stopped them a bit uh, and I sprayed everything else so the stink is probably keeping them away I'll show you the harvest at the end of the video please stay with me leeks looked beautiful gone to seed then they all exploded at the bottom and there was the allium leaf miner so they've all gone been destroyed out the way uh, leek pips, they were grown from leek pips, not seeds, so that experiment has gone to pot. So anybody that's trying it on uh, uh, the alliums, like the onions, like I am doing, all the onions, please let me know how you get on with the neem oil. Again, two of the giant onions, I'll harvest those. I'm not going to throw them away, make use of them fully. As we move into the polytunnel, this is where I bring a few things up uh, into this tray, a water tray. Uh, spare celery, I'm sure I'll find somewhere to put that. Probably uh, in one of the pallet collars that's empty now. There's some lettuce that's gone too far, but we'll take some. Grapes going mad. Everything in here is looking pretty good. We've got tomatoes forming. We have some of the side shoots that need taking out. There's your typical side shoot. I don't bother telling people too much because there's loads of videos. There's one I took off earlier plant that in the ground new tomato plant I'm not planting nothing down there because it gets far too dry I've learnt my lesson with that and this is my best onion now to, for it to be a winner it needs to be as big as that pot and way up here here's hoping stem rot this is pulled out earlier because uh, like I say, the videos, anything over 30 minutes and it switches to two videos. Bit of stem rot, bit of dry. So losing one plant out of all those isn't bad at all. 
new wood chips old wood chips they need harvesting and they will be a great addition to my compost mixes so these are pomgos probably planted far too many but there's plenty of room here for them and there's these peas from Bill and Val. Bill, you are absolutely right about the colour of those. I'm going to shoot now, guys, because I'm getting close to where it's going to jump to another video. Happy gardening to you all. Please like, consider subscribing, definitely leave those comments. And if you're still with me now, make a comment about those lovely flowers. I'll know who supports me and I will support you. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time. Ta-ra for now.